Welcome to Just Cook It Radio, where delicious recipes and real cooking lead to amazing dishes. We cook, you listen, it works. With your hosts, Chef Mario Pereca and Bill Alexander. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're listening to Just Cook It on the Just Cook It Radio Network. And you can watch the show at justcookit.tv. I am Mario Pereca. Bill Alexander's here, and so is Mike Sackley. Yes, I am here. And Good it's spring, you. finally. Spring has sprung. Except it's supposed to snow tomorrow and on yeah. Tuesday. We're this will be the year. Yeah. yeah, this will be the type of year we get snow flurries in April. But it didn't snow this morning, and I drove the bug to work. So the bugs are it. out. I yeah. can yeah, you can't miss lot. it, can you? Beautiful. It was humming, hum, purring like a well, kitten. I'm really hoping that by May 1st, which is the Americanism Day parade that you and I have done in the past, uh-huh. that I can drive the car in the parade. That would be nice. That's 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 my goal this year. But Beautiful. Uh, but right now, all I smell is bacon in front of me. Oh, it smells so good in here. It smells like breakfast time. Uh Yes. So, <clears throat> we have a lot going on today. Really quickly off the top of the show, I want to mention you can call us at any time, 855-590-0590 is the number. Again, 855-590-0590. You can use that number. We still have free home show passes. The home show coming up on April 4th, 5th, and 6th uh, at the Rush River Ice Garden. So, give us a call. We've got free passes for any and all who call uh, and want passes. So, give us a buzz and you can get those. And Bill and I will be there broadcasting live on Saturday, April the 5th. We'll have a regular show from 9 to, 9 to 10. And then we'll be doing a special broadcast, two-hour broadcast later in the afternoon. So make sure you mark that on your calendars and come down to the home show and uh, say hi and see what we're what we're up to. So we'll be cooking there. It should be a lot of fun. And next Saturday is the Celebrity Chef Cook-Off yes. for Colon Cancel Awareness in Fayette County. And you and I will be there for uh, for Just Cook It Radio at Lakeside. And yes. And uh, should be interesting. And again, we want to win. Yeah, so we're accepting donations. <laughs> if you want to call and donate to the cuts for a good you cause. Want, you want to pledge, you're more than welcome yes, to. Yes, it's for there a good go. cause. It's for Colon Cancer Awareness. And uh, what we're saying is if you're going to pledge doesn't matter if it's a dollar, a hundred, whatever. But if you're going to pledge, make sure you do it for Just Cook It Radio. Yes, exactly That's right. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, you pledged us. We yes. want to win. Yeah. We want to, we want Not to do that it we're for very competitive at all, but no. we want to win. We want to do it for charity, yeah. but we are greedy at the same time. <laughs> exactly so, right. <laughs> Double-edged sword. I, That's right. I, another thing real, real quick. I've been watching the program on TV um, that airs uh, locally and also on YouTube. And I noticed something, which someone pointed this out to me, and I don't remember who it was going... Do you know you wear a hat on every show? And I'm going, yeah, I do. And I never realized that you can see the logo so clear on TV broadcast. Last year was an MBA, last week was an MBS. This week is my Shiner hat. If you'd like me to advertise your product or business on my head, please send me a hat. I'll be more than happy to wear it during the show, and we'll even talk about it. Yeah, and I can do it, too. If you send me a, a temporary tattoo, I can put it right <laughs> on my forehead. <laughs> I have a lot of room on my head. I can put, <laughs> I can put it on my forehead, on the back, you know, wherever. So just, yeah. Well, but I realized that going, hey, I could add more hats to my collection, too. So. Absolutely. So, today, Bill and Mike, happy World Water Day. Yes, we're making Kool-Aid. <laughs> I was going to just make some, wa- I was make some water for you guys. You, can you make us some water? I could pour it. That's a little, about a, it. little H2O. <laughs> That's yeah. about uh, all I could do. Yeah, so you got the world- Brita filter here? <laughs> Pure? Yeah. Yeah, we it's World Water Day, so we're going to celebrate water. So if you've gone to our website at justcookit.net, you've already seen the recipe we're going to make. And plus, I have a little surprise coming up um, after we make this. It's fairly simple. It's one of my favorites. I've made this many, many times in my career. We're going to make some water chestnuts wrapped in bacon. Which, sound, which it sounds simple enough, but it smells so good. It is. It's very good. It's very simple. And uh, we have everything ready. So we're going to get rolling here so we can roll some of these chestnuts and bacon. And then I've got some um, things, some surprises coming up. And if you're watching us on TV now and you notice this big silver box, this is the Magic Radio oven. It is magical. This is the one we talked about last week on the show, except it was underneath the counter. This week it's in front of me giving me a suntan. (laughs) It's keeping you warm on this brisk brisk spring day. (laughs) Um, So, first thing we're going to do, like I said, and you go to the website, get the recipe, it's there, justcookit.net. We're going to make water chestnuts wrapped in bacon to celebrate World Water Day. So the first thing you need for this, obviously, is the bacon. So, what I have here, and this is a special type of bacon. You can use any type of bacon that you like. Um, it doesn't have to be this, but I have some uncured bacon here. <laughs> Was it, it's, it's, is it sick? I mean, what's the problem? Well, it's uncured, so it's not sick. Ah, <laughs> no. okay. But the difference between uncured bacon and regular bacon, uncured's a little on the healthier side, if you will. It's <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Bacon. It's yeah. Healthy. It's still Those bacon. Those words don't go it's together. It's still bacon. But hear me out. Okay. Um, regular bacon. All bacon is cured. Right. Okay. Even uncured is cured. It's it's kind of it's the the wording makes it a little confusing. 
It's the way it's cured that differentiates okay. the two. Regular cure, regular bacon that you'll buy at the store is cured with chemicals, with nitrate, sodium nitrate right. and sodium nitrate. And what that does is it preserves the bacon. It, it forms a barrier on the out. Basically, it dehydrates. It forms a barrier on the outside of it so the bacteria can't get in. And that's why bacon is bacon. The uncured variety does not have the chemical sodium nitrate and sodium nitrate. Instead, it uses sea salt and celery powder or celery salt. Celery is naturally, celery salt or celery powder is naturally high in nitrates, okay. natural nitrates though, which aren't as harmful to you as, the chemi as their chemical counterparts. So basically the difference is uncured bacon. If you read the ingredients here, I'll ask you to do this, Bill, and they're right here. Okay. Read the ingredients on the back of this bacon. As I can't see. Pork, water, sea salt, turbinado, turbinado, sugar. turbinado sugar, cultured cel celery powder. Wow, what's one, two, three, four, five, six ingredients? And no chemical names. No turbinado chemical. sugar is simply the brown sugar. You see the, oh, the okay. sugar in the raw, if you yeah. will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's actually natural sugar. So the ingredients on here, there's only, like you said, five or six ingredients, and they're all natural ingredients. They're all whole ingredients. So we're not messing with a lot of chemicals. That's why I, and uncured bacon tastes exactly, you'll see in a minute, like tastes bacon. exactly the same as the other stuff. And um, it, it cooks exactly the same way. So there's really no difference other there than there's no chemicals. There's skillet in every one of us <laughs> begging to be completed by a strip of bacon. Uh -huh. So I'm going to open our bacon. So, so should I do baconisms all day today? Uh, I you think can. so. I think you I, should just, I would like, just I would interrupt it. into the show you at certain say, points. Good things come to those who wait. So here's here's what we do today. You have that. We're going to keep it's going and cooking. And as soon as Mike, either you or I or Bill, whoever's talking, as soon as you hear that, you have to stop. <laughs> we have to listen, and then because we can keep going like nothing happens. It's like happened. words of wisdom. Bacon right. is... The goodest. The goodest. The goodest. And speaking of so, bacon, that's coming from Oscar Meyer, who has the app and the smellinator, I guess is what, <laughs> what I'm the calling smellinator. it. The smellinator. The so, smellinator. Hasta la vista, <laughs> bacon. So what I'm going to do is, we have our bacon here. I opened it up. I'm going to cut it into thirds crosswise, okay? Okay. So we're going to cut it, because wa water chestnuts are a little smaller. Now, if you're going to wrap something else, say you're going to do scallops, and you have large yeah. scallops, you just want to cut them in half to leave that extra oh, yeah. bacon. Right, right, okay? right, right. Okay, right. but for water chestnuts, they're a little smaller, so I'm going to cut them in thirds, okay? Just the whole piece of bacon across here. Okay. So we got our strips of bacon cut into smaller thirds. So now what we're going to do is I have some wax paper in front of me. And I like to work on wax paper just because, you know, it doesn't stick and it kind of keeps things less messy. And I'm going to lay these strips of bacon out one one by one. These okay. third, these mini strips, if you will. Okay. And we're going to work with maybe six at a time or so. So what makes a water chestnut a water chestnut? It, a water chestnut is actually not a nut at all. Okay. It's actually an aquatic vegetable. And uh, it's really starchy. And they call, they're called water chestnuts because they're they're Chinese and they're Chinese is what they are. And if you've ever eaten at a Chinese restaurant, chances are you've had them. Yes. And they're the little white crunchy oh, things. I love them. Yeah, they're delicious. They're really sweet. If you can get fresh ones, get fresh ones. They're hard to find in this area. You'd okay. find them in the produce section. But they grow. They, it, it takes a water chestnut seven months to grow. Okay. To, until they can be picked. So and it needs to be in a tropical environment. So places like California, Florida, or generally the places where they'll be grown in the United States. Yeah. And um, when they're grown and they're picked, they look like a chestnut. So they're brown, they're round. Gotcha. So then, so when that's you that's why we named them that, right? Okay. And when you buy them in a can, they're those white things. Well, they're already. If you buy the fresh one, you want to cut the top off, and then you can peel them with a vegetable peeler okay. to take that brown skin I didn't off. Realize that. And then they're that white water chestnut. The same thing. And we have them because they're hard. Like I said, they're difficult to find around here unless you go to like a Chinese specialty okay. store in the Strip District. But um. We have them in the canned variety, which you can find in any local supermarket. Because I was thinking, like, it, at Christmas, we sing about chestnuts over an open fire. Water chestnuts on oh. an open fire. Then they would just be dehydrated. <laughs> <laughs> hey, question for you, since we're speaking yes. about nuts and they're not really nuts. We were out the other day, and we were talking about it. Is almond a nut or a flower? An almond. I've always or, known or it is to be it, a nut. Or I'm sorry, is, is it a fruit or is it a... Because well, I've always understood that whenever a vegetable grows or a fruit grows, it starts as a flower, uh -huh. right? Now, do almonds start as flowers such as tomatoes do, oranges do, 
Grapefruits. I need Good someone question. to tell me this because I, I have a question. You know, I'm really. I'd have to do some research. Okay. I'm really not sure. I've always known it to be a. It's a, a nut. nut. Yeah, and pe- it, for instance, peanuts aren't nuts. Peanuts no. are legumes. Yeah, right. because they grow in the and ground. They're, and they're grounds, right? They would be a, a root vegetable. Right. So I'm going to open up this can of water chestnuts. We'll get. We'll look at it. Mike. You have a computer there, aren't you? Look that up for what, us. What am, what am I? What am I searching here? What is an almond? Is is it is a? Is What's it, it a, classified as technically? We had this botanically. I guess we, we were at a park Parkhurst restaurant last night. It's a good and question. It, w- it was the topic of conversation when I had my fish. Okay, so I'm going to drain out. There's always liquid in these. I'm going to drain our liquid Why right onto the that? floor. So no, not on the floor. So, the is it, so it doesn't dry out? Yeah, it keeps them from oxidizing. Okay. If you buy fresh ones and you peel them, okay. you can keep them peeled in the refrigerator, but they need to be in water. And you want to change really? that water every day. Just like potatoes. If you peel oh, a potato and really you store so. it, you want to keep it stored submerged in water huh. so it doesn't turn. You know how apples turn brown and yeah. oxidize? Potatoes, water chestnuts, they'll do the same thing. Now, is there anything added with those? chestnuts or are they just chestnuts? They're chestnuts, water chestnuts, water and some citric acid as a preservative. Okay. So, here's our water chestnuts. Yep, there's water Show chestnuts. the camera. There you go. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to take them and I'm going to lay them on the bottom of each strip of bacon here. Of each mini strip. And I, I gave you a piece of parchment there, Bill. Yes, do you, you want to try? No, you that's roll okay. Some? I, I'm watching you. Uh, you don't want to participate? No, I'm just smelling. Okay. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to take a toothpick. Now, there's a little technique to this, but it's it's very, very easy. And once you get it, you'll be able to fly through all these. Now, if I'm at home and I'm doing a bunch of these yes. for a party, I'm going to lay saran wrap across my entire and counter just and just up. line up as many as I can. And then you want to line them all up like this, and then you can just roll, 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 roll. I know we're use, we're, we're we're working with our friends at uh, Fourth Street Barbecue next Saturday. Uh huh. But this would have been so easy huh. for the cook off next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because bacon. Who doesn't like bacon? Okay, my six-year-old daughter doesn't like bacon. Really? Yeah, of, of all of us. My sons think it's wonderful that she doesn't because they get hers. Mm. So it works out okay, real well. Okay, so let me show you how you do this. What you do is I take a toothpick, okay, okay, to roll these. And I lay it right underneath the strip of bacon where the chestnut is. Now, if you were, go to justcookit.tv and you can actually watch me do this or watch on FCTV on uh, Sundays and Tuesdays. You can watch this see how this is actually done. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the toothpick underneath the, the, the bacon strip right under the chestnut and I'm going to even poke it I through a little it, yeah. bit. Okay? And then you take it and you kind of roll it over. Okay. And then once you get here, th- this helps keep it tight. And then because you want to kind of push with the toothpick as you pull back with your hand, and it rolls it over and keeps okay, it tight. I got you. Okay, because if you're just doing it with your hands, it, it'll work, but it won't be as tight. And what happens is when this cooks, you're going to see the fat of the bacon is going to render. Yes. And it's going to kind of hug it and squeeze the chestnut. So you'll see the chestnut in the center you. with the I bacon on the outside. So well, while you roll those, why don't we take our first break? Okay. And so we can come back and yes. Mike can tell us what uh, almonds are. Yes, and I have a little <laughs> surprise now that we're rolling these with these water chestnuts and bacon, and we got some other things going on for World Water Day. So don't touch that radio dial. We'll be back with more Just Cook It Radio after these words from our fine sponsors right here on the Just Cook It Radio Network. Phil Giannetti Motors at 656 National Pike East in Brownsville is a proud sponsor of programming on FCTV. Phil GNA Motors providing quality vehicles for 45 years. If you're looking for a quality pre-owned vehicle, give Phil GNA's a call at 724-785-6800 or stop by their website, philgnatymotors.com. Welcome back to Just Cook It Radio here on the Just Cook It Radio Network and also at JustCookIt.tv. Mario and Bill and Mike in the studio this morning making bacon rolled chestnuts. Is that the official term for them? Bacon wrapped water chestnuts. Oh, I like bacon rolled better. Okay, bacon okay. rolled chestnuts. I think whatever. it's official. We, may, bacon, we have a new name for it. Bacon encased. Bacon encased. <laughs> bacon hugged. <laughs> bacon hugged water chestnuts. So. I'd love to be hugged by bacon, wouldn't you? Oh, absolutely. So, <laughs> Mike, you did Random. some research on the uh, the old almond question. Yes. What do you have for via, us? Via Wikipedia, because I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, That's our Just Cook It Radio almond correspondent. Yeah. The official <laughs> Just Cook It Radio almond correspondent. It's the best title I've ever had, Mario. What are you talking about? <laughs> Mike uh, Sackley. There's no raise with that, just to let you know. I know. Yeah. Oh. 
Title killer. only. I mean, you can either do that or sit in the truck when we do TV. <laughs> yeah. That's sit one in of the, the truck. two. I guess in the truck. Mike exactly in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what he's doing, sitting in, in the, the truck. truck. Uh, just hanging out. So it, what do we know about almonds? It, it's a fruit. It is? Yeah. Classified I, with the peach. It is. It's a cousin of the peach. Yeah. Interesting. So there you go. Awesome. So we know that. Excellent. Um, give us a call, 855. Five. With all your senses, especially the last one. 590-0590. Give us a call again. 855-590-0590 is the number. We're here to listen. We're here to talk. Whatever you need to talk about. Whatever you want to chat about. And don't forget, if you're not in the local area listening to us on a radio station of some sort, uh, you can uh, listen to this live feed every morning at 9 a.m. on your localstation.com. Put that in your browser and you'll be able to listen to us at 9 a.m. every Saturday morning and uh, hear what's going on. Live. You don't have to wait for it. Okay, so... Next thing I want to do today again, if you're just tuning in, is World Water Day. So we're celebrating here at Just Cooking Radio. Does my coffee count as water? It was at one point. <laughs> That's true. It's tainted water, but it's water. <laughs> so we're going to celebrate. We're celebrating. How's that? Deliciously contaminated. We're celebrating World Water Day, and we made some water chestnuts wrapped with bacon. They're in the oven. So just to finish that, to put that to rest, I showed you how to roll them. The, the they're just chestnuts, right. water chestnuts rolled with bacon. You put them on a sprayed roasting rack on a sh- that's on a sheet pan, okay. and you put it in a 375 degree oven. They take about 30 minutes. No, how you know they're done is when the bacon is crispy. That's that's the key. The bacon when it's crispy on the outside, because the water chestnuts you can eat raw, you can eat right out of the can. They're sweet, they're crunchy, they're delicious. But it, when the bacon is, and I think Bill's tweeting a picture right now. When was right the last now. time you cleaned this uh, this glass on this oven? Uh, the last time I used it. Okay, there's fingerprints on it. Well, I was using it today, so okay, I probably touched sure it when I opened the door. Sure. So I will tweet that photo right now. Now that Bill's done yelling at me. <laughs> Wait, gonna, I had to clean a, a deep fryer know, a year I know. ago. I'm still mm. recuperating and from that. I, d- I didn't mention that an actual the actual term, if you want to get technical, about the, uh, the bacon-wrapped water chestnuts, yeah. it's actually a romaki. R U M A K I. That's what it's called. Yeah, anything oh. anything wrapped in bacon is a romaki. So is it you, really? Yeah. So if you have like chicken, li- you can do chicken livers. I've done before. You can do scallops. You can do dates. Well, wait a minute. What is that? A Chinese word? A Japanese word? What is that? It's actually Polynesian in origin. Okay. Mock Polynesian. Okay, and that it was would make inve- sense. Invented by Trader Vic. His name's Victor. Berg, Bergen, that makes Bergeron. Sense. Okay, that makes sense. So, it's ingredients of it's it's in it's ingredients and method of preparation vary, but usually consists of water chestnuts and pieces of duck or chicken liver wrapped in bacon. Okay, so anything wrapped I mean, in bacon. We've called sense. we've had I've made artichokes from maki before, which are artichoke hearts wrapped in bacon. So, yeah, just to point that out, a little remaki for you. So now, guys, what I'm going to do, everyone listening, we're going to talk about water since it is national. Or World Water Day. It's and, wet. You know, yeah, it's. <laughs> That's, I'm talking about water. Yeah. It's wet. Depending on where you see it, it may be cloudy, it may be clear. Well, what more can we talk about? It's not always wet. Sometimes it's it's ice. solid. Yeah, it could be ice. It's, it could be gas form, steam. <laughs> but um, I brought two of my favorite waters. They wet? That, that I like. I mean, these are a little upscale, but this one is Aquapana. Which is a natural spring water, and you can't forget the carbonated variety, San Pellegrino. So these are actually cousin waters. The companies work together. If you go to a high-end restaurant um, and they ask you whether you want still or sparkling water, um, chances are, if you say still, they're going to give you Aquapana. If you say sparkling, they're going to give you San Pellegrino. What Both about tap. Well, that comes from the tap. Oh, okay. Just both, <laughs> both waters, and general. A lot of times, if you go to a really high end place, they won't even offer you tap water. They'll just offer you either still or really? sparkling. Oh, I didn't know that. And yeah, it comes in these. When I w- was working at the Duquesne Club, um, that's what they did. And whenever we would get. Every once in a while, on a special occasion, they'd send a couple bottles of Aquapana up to the kitchen, and it was like Christmas. Really? Yeah, this stuff is because other, other than other than that, we used to drink from water fountain, which was in the kitchen. Which was tap. Which was tap water. So when we got this, and th- this is a water that, um, if you're going to buy this and use it at home, and I use Pellegrino in a lot of cocktails. It's a, it's a natural mineral water. It has the... the, the um, Carbonation, the natural carbonation, a little minerally flavor. We're going to taste them, so you'll 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 see what I mean. But um, the Aquapana, it's just it's got a different flavor. It's cleaner, crisper, um, and uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna try some plain, and then we're gonna do some infused waters and try some different things. But it's just a really good now, water. I see on the other side of the console. Uh, Mike is drinking the domestic uh, Nestle's. Um, <laughs> 
pure life. Pure life that, water. He, that he's drinking mm. right there that is made from reverse osmosis. Yes. Uh, in other it's, words, it's, it, it's, it says it's enhanced with minerals, whatever that means. <laughs> They, they throw a rock in the yeah. bottom of the container. Um, <laughs> That's about it. What's really interesting, and, and, and you go back 20 years ago, we didn't have bottled water unless you had this high-end stuff like the Pellegrino and mm-hmm. the, uh, and the uh, whatever the other one he has. Uh, and, um, and some of the other ones that there were out there. And all of a sudden, with the last 20 years, bottled water has become the in thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. flavored bottled water, I, I wish I would have thought of that. Because... Okay, maybe I would still be here, but I would not have to worry about anything else. I'd be selling water on the street. I think I read somewhere, no, I, I could be wrong, but I'm almost positive I read somewhere in the news that um, one of the states, I want to say California, mm-hmm. is trying to draft legis- push legislation to through it. to ban bottled yeah. water because of the bottles. Because of the plastic, because yeah. no one recycles. Right. And now, the other thing that's interesting is, is when you start talking about water and where it comes from, from natural springs and stuff like that. Um, when, I was a, when I was a kid... And actually, more when I was in college, um, and I went to California University, there was a natural spring on the side of the road between um, between 70 and California when you go one of the back roads. It was a Shalroy exit, and there was a spring. It had a pipe sticking out of the out of the hillside, and you would see people bring jugs oh, yeah. and fill the water up. And you'd go, "What's so special about this?" spring water and they actually did test and it wasn't that it was any worse than your tap but it was still good water they mm-hmm. tested it to make sure yeah and when i was in italy the nat spring speaking of natural springs the when you'd go up to the, up the mountain which was you know we like i said we stayed at my grandfather's house that he grew up in when he was a kid a kid and in the backyard there's this huge mountain and yeah. you, there's villages up on the mountain and on the other side of the mountain so you take roads and it, they're sc- they're scary because they don't have guardrails or anything <laughs> so you're driving up this mountain but um there's springs along the way yeah. and you can stop and fill up bottles and drink from it and it's water that's actually naturally filtered through the earth and it's cold at yeah. all times and it's really good water some of the best water i've ever had and it's from a lot of it's from melting ice caps at the top right. of the mountains and things like that. Which is really interesting. You think now of all the way we, we try to process water and purify it and everything else, that the natural water that's being purified and processed through the earth itself is probably better for you anyhow. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's, and this it's, is, it's truly quote-unquote well, organic. You have to be careful because you don't know, you know, right. some of it, if it actually comes from there, if it's really contaminated right. a bit or what right. or whatnot. So they say that uh, if you're drinking um, bottled water on a regular basis, it's best to drink the um, the filtered water which as I, opposed to different. the spring water. But see, it tastes but different to me. This I've stuff right here, and we're going to open this in a minute, this yeah. natural spring water, and it's bottled at the source in Tuscany. And um, as you can see, even on the label here, it says the perfect match to San Pellegrino, which is what we have here. Different companies, but they work together. They work together. And uh, so this is actually distributed by Nestle. Okay. And uh, but it's like I said, it's so bottled maybe in that's Tuscan. what you're drinking, Mike. They just put it in the, in the, yeah. in the cheaper that's bottle. That's a nice thought. Yeah, yeah. I don't that, think that's so. it. <laughs> so, do you guys want to try the Aquapana first, the still water? Sure. Okay. So when I, when I try this water, okay, when I drink this water, I don't use ice because ice will actually mess up the integrity of the water as it melts. Because what you're doing is is you're putting two different types of water right. in a glass. So you know how hard that is to explain to somebody. What I do is. <laughs> What I do is I always make sure it's cold out of the refrigerator, yeah. and then you use it like that. And um, I'm going to serve these. I actually brought glass glasses I today. I see that. There's no plastic. Because, yeah, I don't want the plastic to get into the water and change the taste. We're using cocktail glasses. So, yeah. some. I feel high and mighty today. Uh, it's fantastic. Drink is still water. glasses. The so dr- we're just going to do the, a little taste the here. The drink of kings. Yes. And then I'm going to play with some. Um, now, this you won't find the, the recipe on the website for this, but I'm going to play with some different flavors. things, flavors, and infuse some of this Pellegrino because this tastes like, I'll give you a taste of this, it tastes like club soda, but but it's got a little different taste to it. Is there a carbonation it. in it, or is there? This is not. This no, is the aqua. Other one. Yes, there is. And the other one, it's mineral water. It's not just carbonated water. And so, this water, just to give you a little, a uh, little insight from their website, it says it's perfectly balanced. Aqua pan is perfectly balanced, light and luminous with a tonic note. Um, it's natural spring water has the rare ability to enhance the most delicate flavors with a fascinating history that mirrors the Tuscan earth from which it flows. Aqua pan encompasses the very essence of Tuscan lifestyle, heritage, and fine elegance and extraordinary. Ordinary water, rooted in the heart of the Italian culinary, artistic, and historic and historic tradition. And Mike, what do you think? So it tastes like it tastes like water. Water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it, to me, it tastes a little cleaner, a little lighter. 
I mean, you can tell the difference. Like, if I go home and I get some water from the tap and drink it, I can taste a chlorine-heavy oh, yes, yes. okay, taste. Yeah, you're right. This, it's light. It's refreshing. It just it, it, it tastes no, like water, but it tastes pure. Yeah, there is really no taste to it. I mean, it right. is. It, okay, and I understand where you're coming and from And this that. water is made in the way that they, they talk about it and the way that it's made. It's made to pay. Uh, these two waters are made... For, and that's why they serve them in high-end restaurants. They're made to go with food because the water, a good water, instead of if you have like a chlorinated tap water, it will actually detract from the flavor right. of your meal and the notes, whereas these waters will enhance the notes right. of your meal. And it's not going to take anything away from that meal. Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to taste everything. So, yeah. and, it, and it's really not there to... I mean, yes, it's quenching the thirst, but it's really there to clean the palate between courses right. and stuff like and that. And another thing I want to mention, these waters really aren't expensive. Yeah, I was going to ask you how not. much a bottle that is. Because this is a bottle, and Aquapana comes in glass. I'm Pellegrino, we have a plastic bottle here, but you can also buy it in glass. This is, I'm trying to see how much is in this. Um, I, I see. It's in metric, so I'm not. Oh, isn't that fluid oh, here it is. on top? It's, yeah, 25.3 fluid ounces. So it's a 25.3 fluid ounce bottle, so you're going to get three to four glasses out yeah. of this bottle and it's two dollars yeah that's not too bad so it's not bad because when you buy say you buy the regular water at the gas station a general bottle of water is probably around i don't know you're looking at 99 nine, cents yeah 99 cents and you only get 16.9 ounces that's true that's very true so you're getting more water here even though it's two dollars you're getting more water it's that's true very comparable for a much yeah. for a much superior product in my opinion yeah. so what we're going to do now is i'm going to take let's try some of this pellegrino now, on its own when you when you when you and talk this, listen when you talk about the water I have to reach over the magic oven yeah. now. <laughs> Mike, we have uh, your glass. We have Mary on the phone. Mary's in Farmington. How are you doing this morning, Mary? Fine. I had a question. Go ahead. Where the old watering trough used to be, there are always people filling bottles there from that pipe that comes out of the mountain. Is yes, that I remember that. Been checked? They still do it every day. Well, and and you think about it, because I remember when the when the restaurant burned down. And and you and you see these people that pull off on the side of the road and, and fill their jugs up with water. I don't know if it's been tested or not. But I see a guy with a pickup truck one of these giant plastic tanks and he'll fill that thing up. <laughs> So yeah, it, it's it's interesting to see what people do. You know what? I'm gonna have to do some research on that because I know some people that uh, that also do that up near the watering trough and find out. And hopefully, I'll have an answer for you next week to see if it has been tested. All right, because it, sometimes it really blows out of that pipe, and sometimes there's nothing. There's a trickle. Yeah, it depends on it depends on uh, how the weather's been. Right now, it should be coming out like there's no tomorrow, with all the right. snow and the rain and everything we've been getting. Right. So, yeah, that's a good point. I, I that watering trough slipped my mind there, but I guess that's why they called it the watering trough. If you think about it, right? Because in the uh, when the horses would come up and down, from what I understood, there was a trough there that was a natural spring, so they could water the horses before they would come down or go back up the mountain. So, uh, Sorry, thank, thank you. For the very call. interesting. I appreciate that, Mary, and I'll see what I can find out for you. Hi, thank okay. You. Thanks for listening. Have a great week, and thanks for listening. But that—that that is that is Bye -bye. that is an interesting that is an interesting um, uh, point because what's happening is is that you see people on the side of the road, and how safe is that water? But think about it: if they weren't stopping to drink it, it wouldn't be safe, right? I, I would assume so. I mean, has it been tested? I would assume I someone's tested it. I'm some sure. Point. I'm sure they have just to, just to find out. So what I'm doing here, really quickly, and I gave you guys a taste of the. Uh, Pellegrino, which is the mineral water. Right. And I've got some fresh ginger here. I, I put some fresh mint into a cocktail shaker. So is this going to make our version of ginger ale? Uh, kind of, sort of. Not really. I mean, it's not going to be sweet. I'm not going to sweeten this okay. at all. I'm going to let the actual... I want, I want to taste the water, the mineraliness of the, the water. The mineraliness of the water. Min mineraliness of the water. And I think we have June on the phone. We have June on the phone. Hey, June, what's going on? Hi. Uh, in regard to the water and trough... Yes. Coming down Jamonville Road, going toward Limon and uh, Cool Spring. Yes. Right below the training center on the right hand side, as you go around the curve, there is another spring. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, now, I haven't been there for a long time, but I know people still go there. And. Uh, I just thought I'd bring that to your attention. Now, have you ever had the water from that spring? I can't remember. Because my, <laughs> Honestly, can't. my curiosity is, what does it taste like? Wet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank it you very much. like water. 
<laughs> Another thing, I have a young friend who's planning her baby shower, mm-hmm. and she is looking for special cookies. A uh, while back on one of the Pittsburgh television station, they uh, talked about this family, and I don't know where the family was, somewhere around Pittsburgh, who bake all the time and have all these baked goods stir, st- stored in their freezers. So if anybody needs a large amount of baked goods, they can get in touch with these people and get what they need. The only trouble is, I don't remember who it was or where it was, <laughs> and I thought you might be aware of it. Actually, I'm not, to be quite honest with you. This is the first I'm hearing of it. That's really an interesting concept, though. I mean, we'll do some research, and if we find anything, we'll be sure to mention it on the air. And do you know of anybody who bakes special cookies for special occasions? Other than the bakeries in the area, I really don't know of any individuals individuals who do it, to be honest with you. But um, there's a lot of great bakeries around, so if you just... uh, Ask around or, you know, look and around. I, and I'm sure if there's someone listening that does it, they'll give us a call. Yeah, and let if us you know. make cookies and you want to help June out, give us a call. That's cool. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, June, thank you very much for the call. We appreciate One it. One more comment. Oh, sh- sure. I enjoy your programs, but sometimes I get lost in the banter. Uh oh. <laughs> I'll shut up now. <laughs> Well, have you completed the chestnuts wrapped in bacon yet? Yes. They're in the oven. They're in the oven right ah, now. Ah, okay. So are we pulling those out? Usually we taste at the end of the program. And I go back to the radio then. Okay. Thanks for your time. Well, thank you for thank calling you. in, and thanks for listening. Sure enough. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So um, I'm having the other, the Pellegrino right now, which has a carbonated kick to it. Mm-hmm. But uh, before you finish what we're doing, we need to take one more break. Okay. And, and I want to, before we go to break, I want to run people through what I did while we were on the phone because I'm making this infused water. And this is, this is just something I'm throwing together right now. I have some ingredients that work together, and it's just something that we're going to try. So I have some... I threw a handful of mint, fresh mint, um, a small piece of fresh ginger, which I peeled and diced, and uh, a wedge of lime into a cocktail shaker. I muddled it um, into the shaker, and then I added the Pellegrino on top of it and kind of just gave it like a a slight shake in the shaker, and I'm going to strain it out into our glasses so we can taste it. So it's kind of a mint-lime um, ginger infused water that we're going to try. And it should work really well with the water chestnuts wrapped in bacon because the chestnuts themselves are... Asian and Chinese, right. Right. and so the ginger and the lime and the mint mm-hmm. should all work really well with them. So don't touch that radio dial. When we come back from this break, we're going to try everything, take more of your calls, and we'll just we have about 10 minutes left of the program to, to finish off. So we'll try not to banter too much, <laughs> and we'll be back right after these messages on the Just Cook It radio network. Phil Giannetti Motors at 656 National Pike East in Brownsville is a proud sponsor of programming on FCTV. Phil Giannetti Motors providing quality vehicles for 45 years. If you're looking for a quality pre-owned vehicle, give Phil Giannetti a call at 724-785-6800 or stop by their website, philgiannettimotors.com. Welcome back to Just Cook It Radio on the Just Cook It Radio Network and also at JustCookIt.tv for our TV program that airs every uh, every Sunday and Tuesday following the House to Home show from the Herald Standard on Channel 77, Fayette TV, and also on YouTube at the uh, Just Cook It Radio YouTube page. So you can listen to us, watch us, and see what we're doing in studio. I feel really fancy now. I have these uh, special glasses with lime on them. <laughs> I'm, impor- I'm, I'm, impor- I'm waiting for the little umbrella. But I guess that's so, <laughs> so. I want to mention the trick to as I'm I'm plating up these chestnuts and bacon, which are now finished. The the trick to the to the infused water is, and you know we're not going to get the full effect, but you really want to let it sit a little and bit longer. Infuse with the 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 mint and the um, ginger and the lime. You want to let it sit for you know even at least a couple hours and now, let that really infuse into the water. And now tasting it, it reminds me of mint ginger ale. 
when I was a kid that you would get like there was the local local uh, beverage companies around here like Tom Tucker. Are these all mine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, whoa! Take a, take a couple and pass them to Mike. The, uh, Tom Tucker and they had Regent and stuff like that. Uh -huh. But it resembles the mint ginger ale. Now, what I like about Pellegrino is. It's the natural. You can really taste the mineraliness to the water. It's not just carbonated water like club soda. Club soda just tastes like water with bubbles. The Pellegrino, you can actually taste a little of the mineraliness. It's actually a little better for you because of the mineraliness. And it's got a medium-sized bubble, which means that mineraliness doesn't bite the back of your right. throat as much. Sorry, I'm eating. So, yeah, it's okay. These are really so good. It's, <laughs> thank you. So the mineraliness kind of, it's lighter. It's got that little bit of... of, of that extra punch to it of the flavor and it just it pairs really well with foods especially with these little bit these little puppies right here these are excellent i mean i mean they're really simple too water chestnut yeah, bacon roll them how long do you put them in the oven for half an hour half an hour at what Three, temperature 375 375 these are really good and they're really simple mm -hmm. and it may take less it may take longer depending on your oven but Keep in mind, the chestnut inside is already, it's its not cooked, but it doesn't have to be. You right. can eat those raw. As long as the bacon is crispy, mm -hmm. they're done. And anything with bacon is better, right? It's right. Amen. It's excellent. So for World Water Day, we've made water chestnuts wrapped with bacon, and we've had, we've tried our aqua panna and our San Pellegrino, which is a clear and a, a still and a sparkling mineral water. And we've made an infused water with some fresh ginger, fresh mint, lime. And uh, it's, it's a, been a productive morning. <laughs> I think so. I mean, what is I, a mountain? A place to proclaim your love for bacon. That's what it is. I mean, I feel important. That's what now. it is. That's what a mountain is. I mean, we got the baconisms, we got the glasses. Let, let's do one more day. before we get ready to wrap up here. When scent embraces sizzle, who knows where the crispy compass will lead you. <laughs> Where the crispy compass will lead you. That's good. And Embrace bacon. the sizzle, please. And all, and all its goodness. The bacon is all goodness. So, again, go to the website, justcookit.net. You can get the recipe for the water chestnuts wrapped in bacon. Super simple, super delicious. Great hors d'oeuvre if you're having, a, if you're having a company really over um, before you go out to dinner. You know, because a lot of people, if you're going out to a really nice place and you kind of don't want to spend all that money for hors d'oeuvres and drinks and dinner you can have a couple cocktails with some of these at home and yeah. then when you go out you just have dinner and a glass of wine That's and it right. makes the you know it still p makes the evening complete and don't forget you can follow the program not only on facebook but also on twitter and um it's at just cook it radio because i just got tweeted is why i mentioned that because of the photograph that uh, we posted on the uh, the bacon wrapped chestnuts um, it's uh, just cook it radio on twitter i'm bill alexander he is uh, mario paraca and that's mike sackley so just put the at symbol in front of it and you can find all of us there we're there we're yeah. active we're at, and actually we have been active so the year of the twitter so far we're almost through the month of march we've been pretty good yeah i mean i'm i still tweet every i make a point to tweet at least a couple times times a day. Yeah. Hopefully more on certain days. And then and uh, uh, I've even joined Tumblr now. I, I know that. I did too. Yeah. Well, I've so, been on Tumblr for years, but what, what, I haven't what, used what it. What is Tumblr exactly? A blog site. Microblogging. Okay. It's like yeah. a social network slash blog rolled into one. Yeah. Okay. So a little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. It takes Facebook and Twitter, combined it, and you got the birth okay. of Tumblr. We have all kinds of recipes, all kinds of pictures, all kinds yeah. of fun stuff. All the shows that we do, Just Cookie Radio shows, are all on there. And uh, again, today is World Water Day, so yeah. get out and have some good water. Put some flavors in it if I you want. I think we should celebrate even more. I mean, why not? Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. Yeah, there, <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm going home to make Kool-Aid. <laughs> World Water Day. <laughs> I just love the fact that on World Water Day we find a way to get bacon. Bacon, into it. well, of oh, course, yeah. that's the best part. So, is this the first time we've used bacon on the show? Mm. Mm. We've talked I about it. I want to say enough. no, but I'm. I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, I, I know, know. you're. We'll have to have to go back through the recipes. Yeah, I, I, I'm drawing a blank. Even TV, because last year when we were doing TV, we made um, for Lent. You did your coconut shrimp, mm -hmm. which was wonderful, um, and then uh, for the. Uh, Celebrity Chef Cook-Off, we did the almond chicken yeah. that, that we did with the uh, orange horseradish sauce, mm -hmm. which was also very good, which was a big kick. We did yeah. something last year that no one thought we could do, because everybody brings everything prepared, not Mario and Bill. 
We cooked on location. And we're going to do it again this year. <laughs> nice. We actually, we, Joe Carey looked at us, you're crazy. I said, no, we're going to do it. And we did. We said, we watch cooked, us. We cooked. We actually cooked. It wasn't something we yeah, We're actually pairing with our sponsors and friends this year, 4th Street Barbecue, for this year's Celebrity Chef Cook-Off. We're going to have pulled pork sliders with coleslaw in them. Mm. And we're also going to have their it's popular, very delicious, which I helped them create, 4th Street Fries, which we're going to be frying fresh there and seasoning. We have clean deep fryers, right? We have clean deep fryers, Good. and we're going to be seasoning with AP number 7. Nuh uh Really? Absolutely. It's going to make its national debut. Have, have you, have you talked off. to our friends at Big Barn about a few pies? <laughs> we can. I like that. I think I think that's going to be more of the home show variety. Okay. So, and you okay. can get free tickets to the home show just by calling us at eight five 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 ninety zero five ninety, or you can call WMBS throughout the week. They have home and, show passes. And if you're not in, if you you live in the Pittsburgh area and you're not listening to us live and you're listening to the podcast, which we know there's a lot of you out there, you can call that number two to get those tickets. It's just we want to make sure that people are going to be using them, and then we'll send them out to you. Yep, the more the merrier. Yep. So. Thanks for listening to this to this World Water Days edition <laughs> of Just Cook It Radio. We have a celebration here every Saturday morning at nine. It's a hoot nanny. A hoot nanny. A hoot nanny. What exactly is a hoot nanny? I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. It's either a hoot nanny. But that's what or, this is. It's either a hoot nanny or a shin dig. It's one of the two. A hoot and dig. <laughs> <laughs> shin and nanny. I don't know. But um, my any parting words, gentlemen. It's fun. I, hey, again, it's bacon. What can you do wrong Mike, with do bacon? Mike, do you want another one of these? Oh, I'm not going to turn that Mike, Mike never bacon. turns down bacon. Water chestnuts with bacon. So, um, if you, again, you can do scallops and bacon. You can do chicken livers and bacon. You can do anything in bacon. Just follow the same proce- simple procedure that we showed you, and maybe we'll do some more bacon-wrapped goodies in the future on Just Cook It Radio. What about but bacon and eggs? You can <laughs> eggs wrapped in bacon. <laughs> no, but, yeah, bacon and eggs, that's the classic. But, um... Go out and have some good water today. Celebrate National wa- or World, water, World day. water Day. And uh, check us out at JustCookIt.net. You can get the recipe for our water chestnuts wrapped in bacon to help you celebrate today. And check out some Pellegrino and Aquapana at your local supermarket to, with some, to celebrate with some high-end And if you, want us to, if you want me to wear your hat on the TV broadcast or in the radio show, just give us a call or uh, email me at Bill at JustCookIt.net. Yes. Thank you for listening. We'll be back with more Just Cook It Radio next Saturday at 9. For Bill Alexander and Mike Sackley, I'm Mario Pareca. We'll talk to you next week right here on the Just Cook It Radio Network. Thanks for listening to Just Cook It Radio with Mario Pareca and Bill Alexander. For more information on today's program, visit the Just Cook It website at justcookit.net. Here you can listen to the podcast or watch Mario and Bill cook today's recipe on Just Cook It TV. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please call 855-590-0590.